Hey everyone, welcome to Love and Life's Journey. I'm Chantelle. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you're new to my channel and you like what you see, be sure to hit that subscribe button as well as the bell so that you'll be notified when I upload new videos. So today I am going to be making a Dollar Tree DIY project out of these two items, plus a few other things. But this is something that several of you have been asking for and asking if I have a DIY for, and it's actually this Ikea hanging bucket that I have in the background of my videos, in my intros, and some of you have been wondering if I have an, a DIY for it. So I decided to come up with an inexpensive version of this. It's not identical, but for $12 or less, you can put this one together. And that one from Ikea cost me around $35 to $40 by the time I bought all the pieces to put it together. So this is a much cheaper alternative, so let's not wait any longer. Let's get started. For this project, I will be using one of these galvanized tin buckets from Dollar Tree. I'll also be using a toilet plunger from Dollar Tree. And I'm using a chain plant hanger from Dollar Tree, but if you can't find those, you can get chain from Home Depot for 51 cents a foot, and you probably would only need like two feet would be plenty. I also picked up two of these square rosette blocks from Home Depot. These were in the wood trim section and they're $1.58 each. From Walmart, I picked up a package of these cup hooks in the black color for $2.47. And then I also got a package of these two wooden knobs and I believe these were $1.98. I'll also be using some wood glue, my hot glue gun with Gorilla Glue, and a foam paintbrush. For my paint, I'm just using some that I had on hand. I had this white Martha Stewart paint from Michaels. It's in a gloss, but you can use any white paint. I'm also using this Apple Barrel paint in the color black, and some clear sealer that is gloss. I wanted it in a gloss finish for this project. A couple other things I'll be using are a hammer and a large nail and not shown is some sandpaper and then also some pliers and I find it easy to have a couple pairs of pliers. I'm going to start by removing the rubber bottom part of the plunger and just setting that aside. We won't be using that. I'm just going to use the handle of the plunger and I am going to need to um, remove this threaded part of the uh, handle because I don't want that and then the other end is a little bit rounded so I'm going to want to um, to make that so that it's flat. The way I'm going to do this is I'm going to use my miter box and saw set and I will link this in the description box below. This is about 10 or 12 dollars for the set and it's super handy for crafting and so I'm just going to put the handle in there and put my saw down in the guide and then just saw that threaded part off. Then I'm going to remove the sticker and use a piece of sandpaper to just go over the whole handle and this will get rid of any adhesive that's left on the handle as well as any rough spots. Now I'm going to take my two wooden knobs and I'm going to glue one to each end of the wood handle. 
and I will be using some wood glue and also a little bit of hot glue just to help hold it in place while the wood glue dries because this is a really awkward piece to try and clamp together in any way so that hot glue will hold it on while it um, allows the wood glue to dry for a stronger bond. Next I'm going to take those two wood blocks and I'm going to paint them with the black craft paint and I did put a couple coats on these just to make sure they were covered. When painting these, I'm just making sure that I'm getting paint all the way down into the little grooves and then making sure there's no drips or blobs of paint so that it's all smooth. Then I'm also going to give the handle a couple coats of the black paint as well. So if you didn't want to make your own rod this way, you could purchase a short curtain rod. I couldn't find one that was short enough that was inexpensive and so I just decided to go this route. You could also purchase a dowel from Home Depot and have them cut it to the length that you want if you don't have any tools to cut your dowel. So here I've already put one of the hooks into the block and it just screws in really easily. I wanted to show it to you without the paint because it's a little easier to see, but I will show a little bit later when I screw the other hook into the other block. So while the blocks and rod are drying, I am going to paint my tin bucket, but first I'm going to punch the holes in the sides where the chains are going to be attached. Now I already have the holes in this one because I'm actually reusing it from a previous DIY where I did a, a hanging planter and I will link that video in the description box below so you can check that out. But uh, all I did to punch the holes was use that nail and a hammer and just gently tap it through. It doesn't take a lot of effort. Uh, just tap it through and then I just kind of um, move the nail around to make the hole a little bit bigger. And I did this on both sides of the bucket. So you can see here that I have some holes punched in the bottom of this bucket. Because I'm reusing this from a previous DIY, those holes were already there. You don't need to do that for this project. This tin has the flowers and garden on both sides of it and it's raised lettering, which I'm fine with. It's just going to look like it's embossed on there um, when I'm finished, so I don't think that's a problem. Um, if you don't like that, sometimes Dollar Tree does carry a tin that doesn't have that on there. It's just plain. So I'm going to be using just a white paint. This is one that I had on hand. It's a high gloss paint, which you don't have to do that because we're going to spray it with a, a gloss sealer. But I'm going to use what I have on hand. I'm also going to rough up the tin using some sandpaper. Uh, just so the paint will stick to it a little bit better and so I'm going to sand it on the outside and inside and everywhere that I'm going to be painting. Then I'm going to paint my bucket using my white paint and I'm using a foam brush. You can use any kind of brush that you want and I'm just trying to do long smooth strokes so I don't get a lot of brush lines and uh, I will put about three coats of paint on this to get a nice bright white look. Mm -hmm. 
I did paint the inside of my bucket. I didn't want any of the galvanized tin to show through uh, because if I have something in the bucket and you can see the inside a little bit, I wanted it to look like it was uh, an enamel piece. And while I was painting my bucket, I did find that I had this paint and primer in one and it's gloss and it's for metal. I could have used that, but I didn't. So that's just another option if you want to use some sort of spray paint. And then uh, I'm going to take some black paint and just uh, get a little bit on my brush and go around the top and the bottom edges of my bucket. This will just give it a little bit of an aged look, which the IKEA bucket that I have is not aged at all. And so I just thought I would do this one a little bit different. So that's why I decided to go ahead and add the black. And you can do this as little or as much as you like. You can make it look really aged and antique or you can leave it new and white and crisp looking, kind of more like my Ikea one. I also decided to add a few black marks just all around the bucket just to uh, take away a little bit of that stark white look. Um, since I did distress the top and bottom, I thought that would make it look a little bit more authentic. So the reason I chose these cup hooks and these blocks to hold my rod was because I needed something that held it out away from the wall enough that the bucket would hang nicely. And I liked these cup hooks because they were already black and they screw easily right into the blocks. And you do want to screw these in a little bit slowly so that you don't crack the wood. Uh, I did go a little bit too fast and I uh, chipped a little piece of the wood out, but um, I just touched it up with some black paint and you can't tell at all. So now I'm going to take my clear gloss sealer and spray all of the pieces with this. I'll do a couple of coats on them all just to make sure they have a nice good protective coat so that they won't chip or scratch. To figure out how to hang my piece, I took my bucket and I measured the distance between the holes and mine were uh, 10 and a half inches apart and then I added 3 inches to that and that is where I'm going to position my hooks. So first I just made a mark at the height on the wall where I wanted the first hook to be and then I'm going to measure over from that hook the 13 and a half inches and that is where I will uh, make another mark. So then I'm going to take a level and I'm going to make a horizontal line at the place where I marked the wall. Uh, for those hooks and that way I'll be able to position them at the same height so that my uh, rod sits level. So here's what the marks on the wall look like, just like a little plus sign. 
I'm going to line up the bottom of my block on the horizontal line with the hook at the center um, lined up with the vertical line. Now I'm not exactly sure where I want this right now, so I'm not hanging it permanently. I am using some command uh, hanging strips, and these are like Velcro strips. You just take two of them and press them together, press the Velcro sides together, and then peel off the adhesive on one side, and I'm going to place that on my block and I'm going to put two strips on each block. Then I will just peel off that backing off of the other adhesive strips and position my blocks on the wall where I made those marks. And then I can just snap my rod right down inside those hooks and it holds it really nicely. Then I'm going to take the plant hanger that I got at Dollar Tree, and this actually has three chains on it, but I'd already taken one off to use for a different project. So I'm using this because it has the hooks already on it, uh, and so I'm just going to insert those hooks into those holes that I made in the bucket, and they just snap on really easily. If you're using the chain from Home Depot, you can just open up one of the links and put that through the hole and then close it back up. So then I'm going to figure out how far I want my bucket to hang down from the rod. And so I'm just kind of eyeballing this and then I'm going to count how many uh, links on the chain that it takes. And so I am just putting the chain around the rod and and then I will be attaching the link into one of the other links to hold it around the rod. So with the chain that I'm using I will be using eight links on each side and so I'm just using my pliers to open up one of those chain links and remove the excess and I'll do that on both sides so, all that, so that I have eight links on both sides. And then I'm going to save that excess chain because you never know when you might need it for another project. So now I'll just loop that chain around the rod and I'm going back behind and bringing it forward and then I'm just going to open up one of the links enough so that I can slip the last link into it and then I'll tighten it back up so that it is held onto the rod. And here is what it looks like when it's all assembled. It's not identical to the IKEA one, but it's really nice and it's really close. And it was a lot cheaper to make it myself than uh, the one that I bought at IKEA several years ago. And so I'm really happy with how it turned out. And here is the original IKEA 
one and I, you know, I really like this. I, I put some Dollar Tree succulents in it in some little tin buckets and so I decided to take some of those out and put it in the one that I just made and I could put two of them in there and it just looks really cute. I can't believe how nice this turned out for as little as it cost. And there is so much that you could do with this. You could hang it in a bathroom and put some toiletries or towels or washcloths in it. You could put any kind of greenery or florals in it. These are just some um, boxwood sprigs that I got at Walmart for 97 cents each. And uh, I think they look really good in this. Or you could uh, change it out, put different florals to go with the seasons. Let me know in the comments below how you would use this in your home. So I hope you like this project. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps my channel to grow. And if you would like to see more DIYs like this, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell so you'll be notified every time I upload new videos. Thank you so much for watching and have a blessed day.